Hello and welcome to the latest message from God's Word brought to you by myself, Steve Criscoll and Elect Bible Ministries. We bring you the truth from the only version of the Bible you should trust and that's the King James Bible. Please be aware that uh, all modern versions of the Bible are corrupt as there are over 776 verses in the Bible that uh, are corrupted and reduced the, de the deity of Jesus Christ and significantly change the meaning of verses in both Old and New Testaments. So moving on to today's message, which is entitled, Trusting God in Times of Difficulty. The Bible text will be presented on the screen, so it would be useful if you had your own uh, Bible in front of you, with some note paper and a pen if you wanted to make some notes. So, let's begin then by reading our first scripture passage, which is all of Psalm 91. Which reads, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers, and under His wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou shalt dash thy, dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honour him. With long life will I satisfy him, and show him my salvation. Let's begin then by, by looking uh, at Psalm 91 in a little bit more detail. The psalmist, which we uh, assume to be King David, he had a very strong trust in God. If we looked at verse, the ver first verse there, he says, He is my refuge and my fortress. It's a, it's a very strong statement. It, it gives that strong picture. And Psalm 91, it's filled with assurances against so many different things. You know, like there's night terrors. I suppose that could be um, things that happen in the night. Um, being shot, in this case, by an arrow. Uh, various and sundry accidents, it could be. Um, and he mentions a couple of times about deadly diseases by day and by night. And of course, that's quite uh, pertinent to the things that are happening in the world today. He also talks about uh, protection in battle. So, again, that's one other reason why we think this might be David, simply because we were he was talking about uh, battle and David was in fact uh, a warrior as well as a king. Now, as you can see, he fully believed in the protection of God from all evil. He even uh, talked about angels being sent to protect him just to stop him from bashing his foot. Well, you know, that's, that does seem a bit trivial, but at the same time what it's doing is it's showing just how the Lord thinks about us and wants to keep us safe. So he tasks his angels to do those things, to, to protect us. And poisonous snakes, dragons, and beasts of various types, like there was an adder, which is a poisonous snake, 
uh, you'll trample all over them. You know, you will be, um, you'll just defeat them uh, with, with great ease. But why is God doing this? Why does he go to such lengths and troubles to, to try and help us and protect us? And the answer, well, it's in there. It's, it's quite simply that God loves us. And the psalmist is quite you know, very clear about the fact that he, uh, he loves the Lord as well. You know, it's this love uh, that is spoken about at the, in, near the end of the psalm. It says, because he hath set his love upon me. And this is a switch. It's switching from David the psalmist speaking to uh, the Lord speaking. God speaking about David. He's saying that David set his love upon me. Therefore I will deliver him. It's a... Um, a relationship, isn't it? It's a, a loving relationship between God and the psalmist David. He will be with him in trouble, it says in verse 15. God will deliver him. God honours his belief and his faith and he promises him long life. And he's going to show him his salvation. That's a very clear statement, isn't it, of, um, of, of a promise that God uh, gives, gives to the psalmist. So, the question then is, we have, well, I say question, we have a question coming really, uh, but when we look at what's been said in this, in this particular passage, we have a man who is, is trusting God with everything in battle, in his daily life, in, in all sorts of areas that, that he finds in, a, in, a, in his time uh, a dangerous world. But the question I want to get to is, in times of great difficulties, do you turn to God? How much do you trust God? How strong is your faith? What does it take to get you to um, lay everything aside, your worries, and be able to say, Lord, I, I lay these things, these difficulties, in your hands? So I wonder then, do you truly believe that God is then going to be there for you, as he was for David, when those times come, as they probably are coming, are there right now for you? You know, times are, are very trying, they're very hard today for, for people all over the world. Uh, and as we know, it's, it's a very difficult time. It, it is a difficult thing to, to lay down your worries and say, this is not my problem. This is, well, it is my problem, but it's, it's something that I want to hand over to the Lord. And because I realize, we realize, there's nothing that we can actually do in our own strength, in our own power. And so we must turn it over to the Lord. You know, there's things like hunger today and, and the disease and uh, people out of work and there's a great deal of poverty and so much uncertainty um, which leads to stress and, and uh, I guess, you possibly even mental health issues and things like that. But do you trust God to bring you through? Maybe then, maybe your faith and trust in the Lord is not quite up to scratch. Let's have a look at our next scripture and let's just read through and see what that says. That is Matthew chapter 14, verses 20, 23 to 33. And it reads, And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain, apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spoke unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. 
and beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. Then they were in the ship, came and worshipped him, saying, Of a truth, thou art the Son of God. We have a, a picture here of, of a man struggling, I guess, a, a little bit struggling with his faith. He, Peter was a fisherman, as we know, and used to being on the water uh, a great deal. That was his livelihood for most of his life. So he was no stranger to the wind and to the rain and to the, uh, the storms and things like that. So he obviously decided he was going to test himself. He was going to test his own faith. But the, the disciples, they saw a figure. They didn't know who it was walking on the water. What was their reaction? Their reaction was fear. Why were they frightened? Well, obviously, they didn't recognize him. They just saw this figure on the waves, which, if you think about it and you put yourself in that position, that's quite a scary thing in itself. We don't. It's not every day you see a man walking on the surface of the water. So we can understand their fear initially, but then they recognize Jesus. And Peter obviously wanted to, to, to test his faith because he decided to walk out onto the water. He decided, well, okay. And he obviously had that initial faith. He had that belief. And he found out very quickly, though, that his faith and trust in the Lord was slightly faulty. Well, when I say faulty, he doubted. The scripture tells us that he doubted. And that's, that's, the, that's the key, isn't it? That's when uh, our faith starts to falter. We can have great intentions, we can want to, to do certain things and we are confident in what we're going to do, but at the first opportunity of something that goes wrong, where a doubt creeps in, that's when, well, that's when a, our thinking starts to go sideways. He felt fear. He felt the fear from the wind and the strong sea. A man who spent his entire life on the sea fishing. And he began to sink. Which means, well, he obviously, uh, the scripture is inclined to let us think, lead us to believe that he was actually walking for a, maybe for a few seconds on the water. And then he saw the waves and the wind around him and that doubt just crept in for a second and he began to sink. Well, like I said, Peter decided to test his own faith and he found himself lacking. But he was just a man, wasn't he? He, he was just like you and me. No different. The difference was that he had Jesus in his life at that time. But he was just like you and me, an ordinary working man. But you know, we, we can see that Peter, that Peter failed. In some ways, Peter failed. But in, in another way, it was a step of faith. And he knew that the Lord was there to catch him. So you have to say to yourself, well, he trusted the Lord to hold him. Even if he was going to fail, he knew that the Lord was there to catch him. And Peter learned something else, I'm sure. Something really fundamentally import important. And that was well, that, that Jesus was the Son of God. And it confirmed something for him, didn't it? That he didn't die. He didn't fall to the bottom of uh, the Sea of Galilee. He was, all Jesus had to do was to, to reach out his arm and Peter was saved. But he trusted Jesus. He trusted the Lord. He trusted that he would not abandon him to die. And this is a lesson that we all need to learn. To truly trust in God. And I've been through a, a situation where I've had to do the same thing. And I'm pleased to say that the Lord was with us. 
So, okay, so what, what do we need to do? Well, let's have a look at our next scripture, which is James chapter 1, verse 6, which reads, But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. When this letter was written, it was it's almost as if the um, the the the, the uh, author was being reminded of this incident with Peter and Jesus on the sea. And what's his answer? What's his what's his reaction? Well, it says, let him ask in faith. What do we mean by that? Those are the first few words of that verse. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. Well, the answer there is, if you're asking something of God, that means that you're praying. You've got to pray. You need to speak to God of your, uh, in, of your unwavering faith and trust in him. Have that unwavering faith. For he that wavereth is like the wave of the sea, driven with the wind, it says, and tossed. In other words, you're going down to the bottom of the sea. You're going to fail. You're going to drown. You're, it's not going to be good for you. You can have faith to step out and do something. You can have faith that the Lord will be there, even if you stumble and, f and fall. It's not the end of the world. And I know this sounds simple. I know it sounds like a, a bit of a, you know, oh, well, Steve, you know, come on. It's easy to say, but not so easy to do. Absolutely right. You are absolutely right if you say that. It is not easy to do. But that's what faith is all about. That's what trusting God is all about. It's about having the courage. Is that, is that the right word, possibly? To step out onto the water. To love God, like it said in the, in, in the psalm. David loved the Lord with all his heart and all his mind. He trusted God. Now the question is, do you? That brings us to the end of this message for today. I really hope that you found it useful in these difficult times. Now, if you like what you see and hear on Elect Bible Ministries channel, then please hit the subscribe link and click on the bell to get an update when we upload any new content. Uh, please also note that we provide a lot of free to download Christian educational material. Yes, it is free. <laughs> and you can share that among your friends as you like. Just go to our website, which you'll see the link on screen, and it's also in the description below this video. So, thank you very much for listening. May the Lord bless you and keep you until next time. Bye for now.